Hey, everybody, this is uh, Darren Spader again, Bayer News Group, Mercury News, East Big Times, here with Mike Lefkow, Joseph Dykus. Guys, it's week 15. Uh, we're done with sectional playoffs. What a grind. We're uh, through that. Uh, awesome games uh, over the weekend. Uh, some surprises, some not not uh, not so surprising results in, in some cases. So anyhow, uh, Mike Lefkow, what a weekend you had. 11 consecutive wins until that 12th game the number one team in the country let you down mike modern I mean, day you know i was kind of glad they lost um, <laughs> <laughs> you gone with bosco you would have had a 12 and a week yeah so, yeah well anyhow uh joseph you uh you went uh nine and three and i went uh uh eight and four so i'll uh, take it left cow you're within four games of the lead with two weeks to go, we got nine games on the docket this week. Uh, before we do that, anybody? Uh, I mean, were we surprised that uh, the Midi gave Sarah a game for three quarters? Uh, were we surprised that San Ramon Valley took down Camp Belindo? Um, any surprise? Oh, Menlo School going on the road. Yeah. Well, sort of on the. Well, I guess it's on the road. <laughs> they went to Salinas and they had to play uh, Hollister, and they won forty-two to six. Uh, left cow, I think you took Menlo School, um, which was a good pick. So, uh, any surprises for you guys on section championship weekend? You know, I was surprised when I looked at my phone and it was Mitty seven, Sarah seven. I think it was a halftime. Mm -hmm. But also, I wasn't surprised at the same time because Mitty, as we've said over and over this year, they've just they've been gritty. They're gritty Mitty. Right. Uh, did you call them Danny and the Miracles? They were Danny and the Miracles. You could look at it two ways, Danny and the Miracles. Danny, the coach, Danny Sullivan, which is what I was implying, but you also had Danny Scudero, who uh, Mike Lefkow yesterday, the uh, WCAL came out with its all-league team, and Danny Scudero was the named the player of the year. I'm sure those the voting was done well before the playoffs ended, uh, and I, I think the WCAL looks at regular season only. Uh, that surprised you? That uh, I mean, Danny had a great year, no doubt about it, and I said, uh, in my tweet, that that to me, that, given what I saw in the playoffs, that was a, a, a solid choice, good choice. Uh, but I mean, you know, a lot of teams go with MVPs off the championship team, and uh, Sarah did not get the w, uh, the WCL Player of the Year this year. Did that uh, did that surprise you? Initially, I was surprised, but after I thought about it, I thought it was the right choice. I mean, Mitty was the second best team in the West Cal. They made the you know, they, they made the section finals. What I resent is when people vote for players from teams that were are sub 500. Mm -hmm. You know, and using baseball as an example, I think it would have been horribly wrong if Otani had been the MVP over Aaron Judge. I mean, the Angels were a, a terrible sub 500 team. He was yeah. a good player, but I mean, he's a great player, but a, a great player on a bad team. And I, you know, I apply the same thing to high schools. I mean, Mitty was the second best team in that league. Scudero was the best player in the league, and he deserved to be the MVP. Triple teamed all night against Sarah in the championship game and still scored two touchdowns, one out of the Wildcat and one a sensational play call to get him open for the tying score uh, to tie it up right before halftime at 7-7. Uh, great route, great throw by Wills Towers, great call by Danny Sullivan, 7-7. Uh, uh, but Sarah... Um, you know, flex this muscle there in the fourth quarter and pulled away to set up their big game against St. Yeah. John Bosco. Ooh, no modern day, no modern day. They got uh, Patrick Walsh going to be going up against his former offensive coordinator, Stephen Lowe, who um, won a state champ, won uh, state championship with Sarah uh, back in 2017 before, before leaving. Uh, Walsh loves Coach Lowe. Loves uh, Jason Negro, the head coach at St. John Bosco. They're all they're all really tight. So this should be an interesting matchup. But we'll get into that next week since the game is on December the 10th. Let's get right to our picks. Starting with uh, this is a state championship game. Seven double A Pinole Valley against Mendota. Uh, Mendota. And I went that back and looked a little research on Mendota. They got a win over. Uh, they've scored at least 28 points in their last five games, and they've got a win over Fireball in overtime, 28-21. Joseph Dykus, tell me, um, tell me what uh, Fireball is all about. Give me, uh, give me a name out of Fireball who is starring in the NFL right now. Good question. Oh, he's stumping. He's stumping. Mm. he plays quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. 
Oh, Josh, Josh Allen. Yes. Good. Josh I don't know Allen's what you're going to say. 28-21. Uh, so they're going to be at home. It's going to be, I'm sure, an electric atmosphere. Jesus Cano will be out there. That's in Fresno County. Um, and they're going to be going up against Pinole Valley. In my opinion, defense travels. Pinole Valley has been sensational defensively, um, shutting out Justin Sienna last week, 7-0. to zero. In their last four games, they've got two shutouts, and they've allowed 19 points in their last two uh, four games. I think defense will travel here. I'm going to take Pinole Valley to win. Uh, I'll let you go next, left gal. I'll go with Pinole Valley. And uh, Joseph? I'll go with Pinole Valley. Cal Preps had them winning 26-17. I don't know if it's going to be even that high scoring, though. No, no. I could see, like, 14-10, yeah, 7 type of game. Uh, next game on the list, this, uh, this is Friday night, a battle between CCS teams. Uh, probably should have called CIF to ask them what went into Palo Alto hosting this and not Santa Teresa, given that Santa Teresa won Division Four. CCS Palo Alto won Division Five, which technically means that Santa Teresa was eight spots better than Palo Alto in the pecking order at the end. Because the way the CCS does a competitive equity format, it's one through forty. But anyhow, Palo Alto will be at home. This should be a terrific game. Cal Preps predicts Santa Teresa by one point. I'll let you go first, Joseph. I got I got to roll with the uh, with the team I picked to win their their section. Give me Santa Teresa. I think it will be a close game. Uh, left cow. No, I'm gonna pick Palo Alto. Ooh, and mm. I, uh, as much as Steve Tappan's not gonna like this, I'm taking Santa Teresa to win. So, um, he he and I have a running back and forth joking text thread that uh, uh, every time I pick them, they don't win, but I think they're gonna pull it out in a close game. Um, next one on the list, this team has probably cost me a number of games every time I pick them, they uh. They lose every time I don't pick them. They win. Menlo School hitting the road to play San Marin. San Marin is a defending state champion in, uh, I think, five double A. But anyhow, uh, that's this is a four A game Saturday night up in Marin County. Uh, left Cal, let you go first. Menlo School or San Marin Saturday night for the four A NorCal championship. No, well, I'm going to be a homer and go with Menlo. And uh, Joseph. Yeah, I talked with uh, Coach Smith a few days ago, and he said that his team's starting to finally get healthy, which is kind of uh, interesting this late in the season, saying you're getting healthier. Um, so I'm going to go with Menlo, too. You're going to go with Menlo, and I'm going Menlo. I I picked uh, Hollister last week, and I lost by, what was it, uh, 36 points, 42 to 6. So yeah. uh, this next one, Vanden 12-1 and one against Bellarmine 7-6. and six. It's at San Jose City College. Left guy, you look at Vanden's record at 12 and 1, and you're wondering why in the heck isn't this game in Fairfield, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, I understand Vanden didn't play as tough a schedule as Bellarmine, but they're 12 and 1. They right. didn't come into the playoffs with a sub 500 record. But, you know, we talk about the, the different flaws in the way the two sections do things. Well, one of the flaws with CCS is I don't think they look at teams' records when they determine whether they should be in the playoffs, where they should be seated who should be home team in, in certain games. I, I think they've got they've got some flaws too, some serious ones. Yep. Vacaville was the only team to beat uh to beat Vanden. That was uh 28 uh was it 2813 or 2823? I can't read my writing in my notes, but anyhow, Vacaville beat uh and Vacaville is a pretty good team. I mean they're yeah. not a great team, but they're a pretty good team. No doubt. Uh, to win Division Two, Bellarmine beat Menlo Atherton and Wilcox on the road, and then uh, St. Ignatius, even though it was on Bellarmine's quote-unquote home field of San Jose City, Bellarmine was on the visiting side, packed the stands, and uh, beat S side by a touchdown. Uh, I'm going Bellarmine. Um, Joseph, who you got? Going Bellarmine, too. Left cow? Yeah, I'm going to go with Bellarmine. They're the home team. All right. Uh, next one on the list, three double A. Uh, Grant, 10 and 2. Hitting the road to play El Cerrito, 13 and 0. This is El Cerrito's first NorCal game since uh, Ben Burkirvin and Sacred Heart Prep running clocked the Gauchos in 2013 in an upset because El Cerrito was favored going into that game. Um, I think El Cerrito gets its NorCal win Saturday, uh, Friday night, and uh, takes down Grant. Although this this is going to be a really close game and. Cal Preps also thinks so. They have Grant winning 35-34. I neglected to say Bellarmine is uh, 21-12 to 12, 
um, score out of the Cal Preps computer. So, uh, Lefka, who you got? You saw El Cerrito last week. You like this team, right? Yeah, I, I think El Cerrito beats Grant. And I, yeah, they're not going to run and clock them, but I'm not sure it's going to be a one point game either. Okay. Uh, Joseph? I'll take El Cerrito too, but I was looking at Grant's uh, games this year. They've scored over 60 points three <laughs> different times. Like that. <laughs> No, over 70 points three separate times. I mean, it's it's crazy. Uh, Lefty, do you think uh, do you think El Cerrito is going to give up 34 points? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, they defensively were not great last week against Windsor. They they played well. It was 34-6 going into the second half, or no, 27-6, and then they went ahead 34-6. But after that, Windsor made some adjustments, and they they scored twenty one answered points. So, um, you know, I I wouldn't. I think Grant could score against them. I don't. I, I wasn't as impressed with the El Cerrito defense as some of the other people were. But I think they're a better overall team. Uh, Grant's only losses were to uh, Reno and Monterey Trail. Uh, so we're all taking El Cerrito. Uh, this next one was a really tough one for me to pick. Two uh, A Championship Saturday night in uh, Danville, where San Ramon Valley at 11 and two will be uh, playing host to Marin Catholic, a uh, battle between NCS teams, Marin Catholic, Division Four NCS, uh, SRV, Division Two SRV took care of Camp Alindo last week, ended their Cougars undefeated season. Will they do the same to Marin Catholic on Saturday night? Uh, left come and let you go first. I'm gonna take San Ramon. I. It, it's it's San Ramon, so we'll see how things go. But I think San Ramon's got a pretty good team. They do. Uh, Joseph? Yeah, I went back and forth on this one, too. But I think San Ramon's going to win. I, the 31-28 Cal Prep score sounds pretty accurate to me. And I've got uh, San, uh, San Ramon winning as well. So we're we're all going with the uh, the East Bay team. Uh, two double A. Man, <laughs> this Lamore team. That uh, that Mac is going to be playing has scored 635 points. They average 48.9 per game, Joseph. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh man! But they but they're going up against Mac and Lepko. You know the Mac house is a tough place to win, especially at this time of year, right? Yeah, it is. It's uh, they'll have a good crowd there, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it is a tough place to play. Uh, Joseph, you saw Mac last week. Not their not. Not its finest hour, but still won convincingly over Castlemont. Yeah. Um, who you got? Okay, Cal Preps has Lamore winning 44-34. I don't think either one of these teams gets to 34 points. Mm. I think yeah. the two defenses two defense look pretty good. It's a playoff game. I think it's going to be a lot lower scoring than that. I mean, I think it'll be 21-17 kind of mm -hmm. game. Who you got? Back. Left cow. I'm going to go with McClellan's. And I went Lamore. Not sure why. Probably going to come back to bite me, but I've got Lamore winning. I, I looked at their only loss was to Clovis West. Uh, although mm -hmm. it was a, it was a big loss, 40 to 14. Maybe Mac does that to them. So we'll find out. Uh, next one, Manteca Pittsburgh, Saturday night, one double a, um, Cal Preps has Manteca winning 34-31, which would be the which would end Vic Galley's coaching career one game away from taking Pitt to a state championship game. Uh, this will be Coach Galley's final game at Pirates Stadium after 21 years. Left Cal, are the Pirates going to win it for Coach Galley and go to state? I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. I think that they're, they've got some really good players. They're at home. I think Manteca is a really good team, but um, I think at Pitt, I think the Pirates win. I got the Pirates winning too. Joseph, who you got? I got the Pirates winning too, and Manteca's given up 56 and 48 points this season at different times. So I'm not sure how good Manteca's defense is against the elite offenses like Pittsburgh has. According, um, well, uh, including including forty eight last week, right in the yeah. playoff in the championship game, they won fifty one forty eight. So we all got uh, pit except the Cal Preps computer, which has Manteca winning thirty four thirty one. We got one more game on the list. It's uh, Friday night in Folsom. It'll be chilly. 
Folsom 12 and 1. No Rico Flores broke his foot, the star wide receiver for Folsom. Although De La, you know, De La Salle can tell you all about injuries this season. Although uh talking to Coach Allen Ball on Sunday, it sounds as if Derek Thompson and Cooper Flanagan will be available for the Spartans on Friday night. I can't see anybody beating De La Salle three consecutive times. Um, Folsom's done it two times in a row by five total points, 28-27 in this round last year at De La Salle and 24-20 in September. So, Joseph, I'm going to let you go first. Who you got? You know, I'm going with De La Salle, and one of the big reasons is, is that you told me you, you've been to Folsom how many times now? Four or five times, and you, you haven't seen Folsom win yet? I've covered Folsom uh, there four times, Bellum in 2015, two De La Salle's and one Sarah. And I have yet to see the home team win on the blue turf. Could happen Friday though. Could happen, but yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going De La Salle too. Lefka, who you got? De La Salle. Yeah. Why? I just think it, they'll finally figure out Folsom this time. You think so? They've had two weeks to prepare. They've had two weeks, to, a week, week to heal, and two weeks to prepare, or an extra yeah. week to heal. So yeah, I think beating them a third time in a row would be a little difficult. That'd be a pretty amazing achievement, right? If uh, right. Folsom pulls uh, it off. No, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Dale Allen yeah, wins. Going to happen. All right, guys. Uh, anything else to add? Obviously, check out the coverage: MercuryNews.com, EastBayTimes.com. It's been a great season so far. We only have one more week to go. Um, Left cow, have a good rest of your day. Unless you have anything else to add, Joseph, you have anything else to add? No. no the, only thing I was, games. the only thing I was going to say is I misspoke about the way some of the matchups were set up this week. Um, this was CIF that set up these matches with yeah. Pally going to Santa or with Santa Teresa playing at Pally and yeah. Vanden having to go down to Bellarmine. But I mean, this is a problem that I see throughout CIF. I mean, reward the teams that have the best seasons even mm -hmm. in the playoffs if you're going to put sub 500 teams in the playoffs make it tough on them make them play on the road make them the lower seeds make them have to earn it uh i have one thing else to add the ci uh, the ccs not the cif the ccs has its evaluation meeting tomorrow for coaches and that's the way they start the ball rolling towards changes for uh next season potentially uh so that'll be an interesting matchup uh, i mean an interesting matchup <laughs> An interesting meeting. Um, they, uh, I, I've heard that there could be there could be some um, proposed changes, significant proposed changes. So I'm kind of curious to see what what uh, happens there. Obviously, nothing official will happen out of that meeting. That's just the, that's just step one of many steps. But the coaches are the ones who uh, who get that ball rolling. And uh, I talked to a coach in the NCS who says I mentioned that uh, the CCS does it this way. And, that coach was like, you know, it would love that the NCS would do the NCS doesn't do anything like that. I mean, the, the coaches are the ones who should be able to come in and say, Hey, this format works. This doesn't, this is a tweak we should do. This is a tweak we should. Um, so it's a good, good process for CCS. Be curious to see my, my opinion. And I've mentioned this to people at CCS is to add that sixth division, no more a teams beyond division three, which means Palo Alto and, Los, and Santa Teresa would have been in division three or, or higher and and gone with gone with that so every everything else from four to six in ccs would be b and c league teams and you and you don't leave who were some of the teams we had mentioned the start of the playoffs who were left out i mean some of the c league teams with good records el camino was, was it i think was one of the teams yeah there were a few teams enough to put at least six teams in a division six bracket uh even if it even if it's not a state qualifier give them a chance to have a, a little playoff and and uh, hoist a trophy. So, um, uh, and that's not a participation trophy, as a lot of critics like to say. It's it's an opportunity for teams to play in their own sandbox and have an opportunity to play in the playoffs, where the spots are not taken by teams that finish sub 500 in their leagues. So, if the CCS what? wants to have those sub 500 teams in their league or in their playoffs because they play in A leagues, put them Division three or higher and and go go with that if they made this great comeback and they've and they're you know 
and they're worthy of winning a CCS title, do it against the teams that beat them earlier in the season, which we've seen in the past in CCS. Well, my I like your idea of a sixth division in the CCS. I mean, the only thing I would do, and one of the things I would bring up at that valuation or at that meeting tomorrow, is that if you're going to have sub 500 teams in the playoffs, they no you you cannot have fewer than four wins and be in the playoffs. If you're three and seven or worse, three and six, whatever, you're out. It doesn't matter who you play; you're out. And the thing is, if you're four and six. You go in a division that probably is higher than you should be in, and you're the lowest seed in that division. So that you're playing the number one seed in the first round on the road. In other words, you really have to earn it. If you if you come in at four and six and you're in a tough division and you're the eighth seed and you go through and win, okay. Um right. I'll do credit to you. And and then in the, the NCS. I, you know, I saw the uh, Nate Smith's, uh, the Heritage Athletic Director, who made yeah. the favorite. And so I did my own and said how I would have bumped up some of these teams. And I got a lot of response off of it because I said, you know, San Ramon Valley Division One, Marine Catholic Division One. Right. Um, right. And I said I would leave Campbell where it is. I mean, they're a smaller school compared to some of these, but I got a lot of people responding. I'm Including I don't the understand why you have to make the division state. You you have to put teams in the divisions right now. We don't know what these teams are going to be next season. Right. Just, they had a good season this year. Uh, Campo's losing the quarterback and the star receiver. Those are yeah. the two best offensive players. So I mean, why why? Well, you won this year, so you got to go to division. That's ridiculous. Let's well, see that's what somebody. You make that's the decision maybe after September, or if you, if you have to make it before the playoffs. CCS doesn't make it until the playoffs, till right. they go to the to the meeting. But if well, that was one of the responses I got is you know you're you're punishing teams for being well coached, and what you're doing is you're saying oh the teams had a couple good years, a couple bad years, so let's change them all around now just for a couple good or bad seasons. Right. You know so, you're not looking at the overall consistency. The it, it just. I don't no, know. No I'm system sorry. Is perfect. No system is perfect, but but our two sections, our two primary sections, they have they have some formats that could use some work. Yeah. Do we uh, all agree? I, I do think though, just personally, I think the CCS system is probably a little bit closer to my ideal playoff. In oh, the me NCAA. too. I've, oh, I've, I've, said that. Sure. I've said that. Yes, no doubt about it. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. Yeah, no, I mean, that's it. CCS has got a pretty good system. Like you say, a little bit of tweaking and it'll be fine. Yep. NCS, no, though, has got to revise those divisions. The NCS needs that way. to. That's just not – that Newark Memorial Marin Catholic game, that, you shouldn't have that. In the right. first you, you need to uh, – the, the NCS has some foundation problems that need to be replaced. The CCS is, has a foundation, and they actually have some some pillars, and they, they got a house. They got the walls it just up. A, yeah. it just, yes, it just, it just needs a little bit, maybe some paint and you know, maybe a maybe some a furniture. remodel here and there, but nah, it's uh it it's at least it's headed in the you know right direction. <laughs> yeah, no, I think they're making a legitimate attempt to do it right. And it's, it, but you know, the thing that I resent also is that these section officials and CIF officials are paid pretty good money. And start earning it. Yep. Hey, one one last thing before we go. I just wanted to get your guys' opinion. Uh, Left cow. I mean, Coach Patrick Walsh and I talked on Sunday, and he uh, he addressed the modern day rumors out there. What did you, what did you think of his comments? Well, I you know they were pretty interesting, pretty <laughs> funny. I mean, you know, it's it's Coach Walsh. He's he's a good guy. He uh, he gets fired up, and you know, I'm sure that he's honored by by this kind of talk. Um, yeah, I don't know if he would listen to modern day. I, I think he would stay up here, but, um, yeah, me too. I, you know, I, I'm sure he's got to be flattered by it. I mean, that's basically saying that they think he's one of the best coaches in, in California, the nation. I don't know. Um, so I, I love, I love this quote where he said that Sarah has the foundation, like the, uh, like the foundation at the golden gate bridge, that that's how strong the foundation is there at Sarah. 
Yeah. Blood, well, sweat, and tears. What did you think, Joseph? Real quick before well, we wrap. First up. of all, that that quote was 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 a uh, golden to use a pun. Um, I mean, yeah, like you said, you know, if if modern day is interested in you, that certain that's certainly flattering. But at the same time, he's built a program up at Sarah that what this is their is this their third year in a row Most going year that they've won CCS the top division. Season. Third I mean, season, third full season in a row. Yep. And like your like your article said, he has a son who's about to be playing uh, football at Sarah. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't think it didn't sound like the modern day rumors were anything more than just uh, rumors. Right. But it is flattering, as he said. It he's human. It's flattering. Yeah. So good point. I'll tell you one school that should take a hard look at uh, Coach Walsh, not necessarily as a head coach, but a hard look at him. If I'm Stanford. I'm, and I'm, I'm serious. I mean, I almost was, asked him that because it came. The, it came out. Our conversation happened hours after Shaw uh, announced he was stepping down, not for the head coach, but you go ahead, Lefty. I'll let yeah, you. What I was going to say is, here's a guy. He's at Sarah High School in San Mateo, which is basically next door to Stanford. He knows the kids in that area. He's had tremendous success in that area. Why not? I mean, I'll say one thing that uh, San Jose State did when Brent Brennan was hired. He hired Alonzo Carter as one of his assistants. Carter was the head coach of Contra Costa College. He had been at McClyman's. He had been at Berkeley. He knew the East Bay. He knew where to go get kids. And my guess is that Patrick Walsh could be a valuable, very valuable resource for Stanford. In terms think, of I mean, if Coach Walsh comes into a living room to recruit. Yeah. How many guys are going to walk away going, oh, I wasn't that impressed? I mean, <laughs> he. No, because he's so fired up. He, he I mean, is so I, fired I, up. I mean, kids want to run through a wall for that guy. I mean, I, I'll tell you, I don't know who Stan. I mean, I know John Wilner is throwing out the name Chris Peterson, and maybe they go after him. But I mean, I think any coach who winds up at Stanford could do worse than finding a spot for Patrick Walsh on his staff. Yeah. Wow. Maybe I should have said, hey, man, there's that other team in red, <laughs> Cardinal Red, right down the road. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I know one time. I almost I, joked. That almost be, was my lead into my modern day question. Like, hey, I got to ask you about that team in red who just has a coaching opening. Well, I mean, you know, I know that a lot of people say, well, he's just a high school coach, but he's a damn good high school coach. Mm -hmm. And he's at a very good program. He's right in the area. He knows kids. I and you know he was a good college athlete himself at San Jose State and Texas. I mean, I didn't, uh, didn't his mentor Bob Latticer get uh, offered by some colleges? But I mean, he's always stayed at Dallas, right. obviously. But. Right. Yeah, as I recall, Stanford was looking at him when uh, mm -hmm. Bob was at uh, Dallas. Yeah. What about Cal? Did well, Cal I mean, personally, I never figured out why Cal hasn't made overtures to Alonzo Carter. I'd hate to see San Jose State lose him because I'm a San Jose State alum. But, I mean, if I'm Cal, I'd be thinking, you know, why not? Right. I mean, who knows the East Bay better than uh, Alonzo Carter? And who works harder than Alonzo Carter? I mean, he'd be knocking on every door in, in the East Bay. I'm sure he'd go up to the Sac Joaquin section. He'd be down in the South Bay. I, I'll tell you what, I think y'all could do a lot worse than hire a guy like Alonzo Carter. So you've got a new job for Patrick Walsh and a new job for yeah. Alonzo Carter right here in the last yeah. five well, minutes. Well, yeah, but I'm not as enthusiastic about Alonzo Carter <laughs> leaving San Jose State. If, if I wasn't a San Jose State alum, I might be more enthusiastic about it. But no, Good no. question, Lefty. Um, if in this hypothetical world, Alonzo Carter got the Cal job or Patrick Walsh for some reason went to Stanford, could you build a winning, like, win seven, eight, nine games every year program just recruiting, say, from Marin, Sonoma County, down to, say, Salinas, over to Sac Joaquin? If you just stayed in that area, would you be able to build a a winning program? You mean if you just recruited the uh, Bay area? The Bay area. Or are you talking about – Sacramento, maybe. Yeah, I mean, when I'm looking at Northern California, I'm saying – North Coast, Central Coast, and Sac Joaquin, um, mm -hmm. all three of those, plus whatever Oakland and San Francisco could contribute, Northern section and all those. But, no, I, I mean, I think that you've got to look at Southern California, too. If you're a if you're a California team, you've got to look at the Los Angeles area. 
or Southern California. You, you don't ignore those areas. But I think if you were just building on kids in California, you could build a, a very good football program. Guys, that was awesome. We'll yep. wrap it up here. We'll continue this discussion maybe next week as we move into state championship week. We'll see how many teams we have. We know we have Sarah playing next week, and we know we're going to have a winner out of uh, um, Palo Alto and um, Santa okay. Teresa. So got two teams. How many more will join them? So anyhow, uh, guys, have a great rest of your day. We're going to wrap her up. Check out the covers, mercurynews.com, eastbaytimes.com.